come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where weekly movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same stuff that we are. Who are these internet radio superstars? Holly, Michaela, Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Sean, what did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched 2002's Eight-Legged Freaks. Directed by... Ellery Elkayam. Who we would know from. <laughs> mm, well, Colin, <laughs> would we? I think I, you might not. Uh, the only things that he has done before A Legged Freaks, he did Larger Than Life, which is where I believe the um, idea for this uh, movie came from. Uh, I believe it was a short okay. film. Okay. Uh, he did an actual movie called They Nest, which is. I don't yeah. recall that one. Okay. An actual movie? It's so an actual you movie, sure? kind of. So, so he really likes them. The ant movie. Huh? I think, well, he <laughs> likes like bugs, so yeah. Everything he does is inspired by right? it. Um, and then he did a couple of Return of the Living Dead sequels, mm-hmm. uh, Necropolis and Rave to the Grave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they rave to the grave? I haven't one? seen them because oh, they look terrible. Yeah. They yes. do. Uh, and then Without a Paddle, Nature's Calling. So. Without a Paddle. Oh, this is no, the, right. sequel. the sequel. The sequel. Oh, the yeah. sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd the say everything seems about without a paddle. right in line. Okay. Like, it seems like. Oh. This guy makes what he makes. Well, hey, at least he's got some money in the bank for making eight-legged freaks. Sure. Uh, how successful? I mean, this movie, obviously, I mean, it sounds like, you know, we all know about it. It's one of the... Yeah, big... what do you guys... Have you uh, have you guys seen this before? I, I've never seen it because, honestly, like, the poster is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. <laughs> it's not great. It looks incredibly lowbrow in, like, a sci-fi channel movie. Yeah. And, honestly, maybe that's not wrong with... It. Maybe that's not wrong with, with the, the quality level of this movie. I don't movie. know how hard they were trying in 2002. So what year was uh, Sharknado? I mean, After that was this. way later. Yeah. Like, ten years later? At least. Okay. Hey, what year hey. was Snakes on a Plane? I think it was like 2007, uh, okay. Seven? something like that. Yeah. Okay, because there's like a tone maybe here, like the idea. Snakes on a Plane has a good poster though, a really good poster. <laughs> but it's a horrible movie. I mean, well, well, isn't it? I mean, I've never. Seen why it. hasn't that come to the Saturday Night Freak Show? Right? I mean, yeah, Snakes on a Plane. Give it, uh, give it time. That's, give it time. <laughs> Ooh, I think we got to give it like tonight's movie. We got to give it another 20 years. It needs to cook a little more. <laughs> sure. it, Sean has already been like what 14, 15 years since Snakes on a Plane. It's been a while. Oh no, I meant for like uh, that's what I mean. Sharknado was twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Okay, wow. but I mean, would I be wrong in saying that there? It feels like there's a some kind of common thread that's going on here. Like this movie has more in common with like the later day direct to video uh, Sharknado, Sharktopus, whatever sci fi yeah, channel giant absolutely. than it does with like its antecedents, like. Uh, you know, uh, arachnophobia gremlins. or Kingdom of the Spiders or, or something like this that. This is a little gremlinsy. It's also a little, uh, I'm watching it tonight, a little Critters 2. A lot Critters 2, actually. I heard, like, the Critters, like, laughs. The spiders laugh in this movie. <laughs> yeah, okay, they, so that's the yeah. tone that we're going for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you didn't get it by, I think the first tone setter was the cat getting smashed into the wall. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. think if you got where they were going from that point, like, Which, you're pretty, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty mad hilarious. at the rest of the I'm movie. I'm definitely, no, like, not a professional in, de- in the carpentry or anything, but I've never ah. seen drywall do that. No? No. No, not we're, like, not like the, uh, what, what do you call it, the... Cat prints come through like uh, the whole head comes through like yeah. So what's like that? The you're needles. thinking of the needle thing? The needle or, things, yeah. yeah or the magic have, needle like, things where you put yeah, you put your yeah, hand yeah. on it and it comes in the other side. Like yeah. Yeah. Freddy Krueger's face comes through the wall. It's like that, but it stays there. Right? Yeah, because yeah. we're oh. saying. Oh. So which was better, horrible, this but... or the remake Nightmare on Elm Street, which CGI? Ugh. Oh, we're putting some serious thought into this. Really bad. I get oh man. I think maybe I give the edge to this because there were yeah. some Ooh. scenes where I was like, "Yeah, it doesn't look." Horrible. I think my problem was more the choice of spider that they they chose mm. to use. They're these spindly spiders with kind of uh, zebra looking legs. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they just remind me of the spiders from Jumanji. 
the first Shumanji yeah. kind of when yeah. the big spiders start attacking the house. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Why are they not tarantulas? Because those are like yeah. the most repulsive looking ones, you know? Yeah. I think maybe because they've been overdone at this point, right? It's like, well, if you're going to do a spider movie, you do tarantulas. And these guys are like, no, we're going to do something new. We're going to do jumping spiders. Mm-hmm. You haven't ever seen that in a movie before. Jumping spiders. But oh, so it's done by the two previous movie spider movies. Like there, it's not like there was a, a run of spider movies at this time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm, that's what like, I'm saying. So I'm just like, like, overdone by what? Right, because they it's, <laughs> like, it's the same thing as arachnophobia. There's the little spiders and then the main one is a tarantula. Like yeah. that's the same thing they do in this movie. So it's not anything different. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was just saying that it feels like <laughs> I've been watching well, wait, it. Doctor, no, there were tarantulas. You always go with the tarantula. They got uh, what are the trapdoor spiders it's in this. Scary, and that's what makes it gross. That's why you go with it. I, I think it's because of it. Yeah, and it. it's got like the thickness to it. It's like that little thing. Like, like just spiders shouldn't have fur. Yeah. Like, that's just, <laughs> I shouldn't be able to make it. If I got enough together, I shouldn't be able to make a coat out of them. Right, which is what it feels gross. like yeah, with tarantulas. Ever done that. No, Do no. you have uh, spider uh, coats? You know what, Colin? I think I, I think I am getting coats. this tarantula thing from. <laughs> now that I think about it, the nineties, like. A gross out comedy moment was to put a spider in someone's face. Oh, yeah. Like in the and 90s, it was one like, of those big. In Home yeah, Alone, yeah, yeah. and in that jungle to jungle, there's like a tarantula mm-hmm. all over that movie. In the that, 90s, it, like a, a minute of comedy was like, let's put this gross spider on someone's face and have them scream into the camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was a big, <laughs> yeah. big egg, big time. Eight legged freaks was like, we're going to we're going to mix it up and we're going to show you like a spider that you haven't actually seen as a gigantic spider. But the only thing is that, like, because it's all CG, it kind of... Because, I mean, I am an arachnophobe, right? I mean, I don't like them. Uh, but it, when it you can tell that your actors aren't actually in a room full of spiders. Yes. So it, it doesn't different. convey that, like, sense of, like, oh, my God... There, there's like one scene where there's a real spider on somebody. In yeah. Entire yeah. Movie. I don't. I don't think Colin could have pulled his bullshit tonight and gotten me. I, I think. Right. Yeah. I think I, yeah. <laughs> the anxiety level isn't there it's when they're there. big, no, right. giant I, roaring spiders that like, laugh like gremlins. It's like when I watched Anaconda. I was fine. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a good. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Good I, I kind of feel like some of the actors struggled with like imagining a CGI spider in this movie too. Yeah. They kind of just seem to like whip their heads around and not really look at anything in particular a lot. Uh, that was right. probably directed like, just look everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't focus, they can't track you and tell you you're wrong. I know, because I always enjoy watching that kind of stuff in CG movies mm-hmm. where, uh, you know, you have, like, your, your characters backing up and firing shotgun blasts, you know, to the right, to the left, and then one, you know, straight up, and then, like, the CG animators have to go afterwards and go like, okay, right, he, he shot looked over at, there. yeah. So yeah. that's a good place to work a spider up to that <laughs> moment where it's so like you can get shot. Right. You know, it's like and okay. one will fall from off screen through and onto the floor. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh you were saying the actors are struggling in this movie. Who's in this movie? David David Arquette. Arquette. Wow. Which, top I mean, bill. <laughs> top that's billing. Your top build, I think top you're in trouble. <laughs> billing. Uh yeah, I was gonna say, is this oh I forgot to look at David Arquette. Is this around I wonder if um what was Ready the rest? Ready to rumble, <laughs> which I've decided tonight I will not revisit anytime soon because I want to keep that as a classic in my head. <laughs> well, he's banking on that scream notoriety, right? Where I, he made the that made. That's I mean, where my David Arquette experience kind of starts and ends, like with Scream. Like I don't need much more. David than Arquette is not a leading man. No. I mean, no, definitely he is not. not. He does not have star power. No, even then. Did not. So what do you mean? Like, why wouldn't you cast him in it? Because obviously this is his uh, a leading role for him, right? Or is this an ensemble? Is he the lead in this movie? I think Carrie Wurr is kind of more of the lead. Yeah. See, I was like trying to figure out they, which one of them. They spend a lot of time with a lot of different individuals in this. It's very confusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. when it, Their focus is strange. Yeah, yeah. When it's kind of supposed to be that, you know, the guy, the prodigal son returns. Like, that is the story. Right. Kind, that's kind of the story. Kind of, not yeah. really, though. Like... Oh, you think it's going to be, and then right. it's like, well, it kind of is. I think they're like humming a few bars, and I think that's right. it. I don't, I don't think they're, they're yeah, doing character it. dynamics are not really this movie's strong point, no. but uh, no. David Arquette, before we uh, move on. He's coming off that 3,000 miles to Graceland heat right after this, <laughs> just before this, wow. which is actually a decent movie. One was, was riding the bullet. And the Gipper. Wasn't the Gipper the one with... Oh, it was the one with the... I've never heard of these fucking movies. <laughs> <laughs> I know riding the bullet. What the fuck That was, that was a Stephen Gipper? King uh, story directed by Mick Garris. But, I mean, that was like direct-to-video. That was when it was like, 
Wow, you can't even use Stephen King's name to get like a theatrical release. I thought it was Damn. the Gipper or something about like a homicidal Ronald Reagan or a guy in the Ronald what? Reagan mask. Maybe wow. I'm wrong. It was okay, wait, all right, Riding the Bullet 2004. Let's see. Slingshot? No. What did you say it was? I thought it was the Gipper, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, it definitely wasn't Dirt Squirrel in 2005. That no. was also on David Arquette. It has a poster of, like, yeah, it's a guy in the Ronald Reagan mask. The man it works. He just works in shit I've never seen. I was, right, in, I was yeah. scrolling his IMDb, and I'm like, I have not heard of two-thirds of this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, we are putting him on the Saturday night what? Uh, freak show. Wall of really? Fame we did a lot of screams. I was going to say, we did uh, two screams. screams. Yeah. 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 We did Scream 2, we did Scream 4, mm-hmm. and with uh, Eight Legged Freaks, welcome aboard <laughs> David Arquette. <laughs> Not Carrie Warr, huh? To the Saturday night freak show. Number two out of three with Anaconda, right? Right. Yeah. We need right. one more mm-hmm. Carrie Warr movie. What's it going to be? Oh, I don't know, but it's got to be another big insect slash. She's been in a right? ton of movies like that. I was scrolling uh-huh. her IMDb, and it's all like sci-fi level stuff I've never heard of, or like sequel, like sure. three, fourth, fifth, deep sequels to other movies. You know, right, so Sean, done so you? Yeah, you'll right. find that. Sure. Give me the Carrie War cockroach movie coming next. <laughs> Um, who else is in this movie? Scarlett Johansson. Oh my god. This has got to be around the uh, uh, Home Alone 3 time, like, uh, I'm guessing. Ghost World had already happened at this point. Did it? Yeah. Okay. We got Ghost yeah. World. Yeah. Very young Scarlett Ho- Johansson, yeah. This was uh, kind of a surprise for me, because I missed her name in the opening credits. I'm like, wait, that's <laughs> Scarlett Johansson <laughs> at like, 17 years old, or whatever the hell she is in this movie. Was this right around that time, with that movie with her and Chris Evans, where they were like trying to cheat on a test? <gasps> I forgot about that movie. Yeah. I think that's probably uh, around the same time. She, I forgot that they, they've been working together a long time. Yeah. Yeah, probably around the same time. I forgot she had this whole body of work beforehand. Yeah. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Before she was discovered by Woody Allen and was put in a bunch of prestige movies like well, Match Point. Lost oh, in Translation. I, 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 that, I know that. Lost, after this. Yeah, Lost right, in right, Translation. Right, 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 right. That did. Yeah. Yes. Um, which is real. Like, I had a moment watch this movie being like, wait, Lost in Translation was the next year after That's disgusting. She was, what, 18 in Lost in Translation? <laughs> she's, and Bill Murray's oh, like yeah. 56 or she's something. She's like 18 in the movie. That's gross. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Ugh, I had never had that realization until we were watching this movie. Ew! Yeah. yeah, when you put it in contact. That was the most horrifying moment of the night for me, was putting that mask together, <laughs> yeah. watching this movie. Because you're not going to get those horrifying moments from a horror movie. Well, it's not, it, this isn't really a horror movie. No. Though. It's a comedy. There's definitely a comedy. It tries to be. A <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I'm not saying I think it's funny. I'm right. just saying yeah. it's a comedy. Right. It's Those are two comedy. separate things. Right. It is labeled as a comedy. And yeah. I think that is as much as we can say about it. <laughs> I was going to say, because I sat in this room tonight and I heard Mary a chuckle. Crickets. Okay, I, I did mean, hear a chuckle. I there were a there. couple chuckles. Yeah. Or was it, you're making me nervous? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Just for, based on delivery alone. <laughs> well, because people acting like real people is right. always funny. Yes. Right? Yeah. Indeed. We've also got uh, some character work here by uh, Leon Rippey. has, like, a pretty good uh, large part in it. Uh, Tom Noonan bra- briefly shows up at the very beginning. Um, because everything has to come back to Gilmore Girls, Logan Huntsburg. Yeah, magic reason. Yeah. This yes. was a bigger role than I thought he was going to, honestly. Yeah, he does. Mm-hmm. I like to believe that him and his gang of, like, motocross mm-hmm. douchebags are the same kids from Pumpkinhead. <laughs> See, I and was wondering. Around fucking shit up yeah, <laughs> I like thought Hills Have Eyes too, or Hills, you know. Oh, or, yeah. I'm like, is this like a Pumpkinhead uh, yeah. Hills Have Eyes kind of like Connected because universe. there's like a, an old old school kind of feel to this movie. Oh, Doug E. Doug is in this movie Doug also e. uh, because uh, uh, Art Bell, uh, you know, and like, mm-hmm. uh, well, he's not really a shock jock in this. It's more he's basically being an Art Bell type character mm-hmm. um, out in the middle of the desert. Uh, there's a throwback feel to this movie. Like, uh, you can almost trace, like, the way that it's, you know, maybe Tremors, you know, did stuff yes. like this. Uh, we were talking, I think, on our Humanoids from the Deep episode, uh, Piranha. You know, it goes back to, like, Jaws or something like that. You have a small community beset by uh, these creatures. Some, yeah, some other, some out of the ordinary creature. They're cut off from the mainland by, you know, their one radio tower goes down, or, you know, they're inside the mountains. Yeah, so like it's that. like an insular little they're community, cut off. Yeah. you know. Um, but usually these movies do a lot better job of kind of uh, explaining or, you know, setting up the character dynamics, really, yes. than this one did, where they just kind of felt like, well, there's people here, but, you know, they don't really interact with each other much on a daily basis, <laughs> even though they seem to know, you know, like, hey, Sheriff, you know, 
But, right, know. no, it feels like the actors in the Truman Show, like they're all on a track going throughout the day until the spiders show up, <laughs> and that's their only purpose. Well, how do we get big giant spiders in this movie? I guess that's the big question. I mean, that's where it's coming, because the original title of the movie was... Iraq Attack. Which sounded too much like... Iraq Attack. Yeah. Even though they said it it's at the very at the beginning of the movie. Iraq Attack? Yeah. yeah it's a bad, a bad title. title. It's also a really bad line in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they changed that to Eight Letter Good Freaks, which is also a, a line in the movie. So how do we get big giant spiders? Toxic uh, waste. Yeah. Because of course. Obviously, Colin. Yeah. But this is where the logic is flawed for me in the movie. <laughs> Ooh. Because, okay, so this this spider creep guy, the guy that collects spiders for no reason. Oh, I like spider is, creep. Is, <laughs> he has a spider farm, a touristy spider farm. It says like Joshua Spider Farm this who, way. Yeah. Oh, who would visit? <laughs> right, yeah, I'm running going the other way. <laughs> yeah, because you know, like, you know the, yeah, we've gotten the cages. They're everywhere else too, but they're in the cages as well. So, so the toxic waste gets accidentally dumped in this lake or this river. Like you do. It, and he is feeding the spiders crickets from this water source. And they're making, he said it's like steroids for spiders. So why is the, are the fish in this river not right. becoming what gigantic? Like, okay, well, it was a pond. Whatever. Whatever. There might not be fish in there if it's a pond. It's, it's just, crickets there. See, I think the uh, end credit scene should there have been yeah. the one. Should have been like giant goldfish. Just sure, like, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, like there's yeah. this is affecting like and why aren't the crickets getting gigantic? That's what I want. Why, like why, big yeah, ass yeah. why is it literally only spiders are affected by this? Right. A second generation exposure to the you have to ingest it. I have no but idea. But even so there's some sort of ecosystem <laughs> I was in the bottom. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's some sort of ecosystem in this bottom. We know there's crickets there, so there's gotta be other things too. Even still, like aren't like deer or something or somebody's gonna come drink out of this water at some point. Like yeah. and it's just it's it seems like it's too many steps removed. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so you got to do too much math to connect the dots. It would have been funnier if somehow there was like a whole nother movie going on where all those other animals you just talked about, mm-hmm. like, it got huge and started attacking the town. Over. In the background, a background of like <laughs> so, a giant yeah, some, deer running through would have been sure. hilarious or yeah. something. Four legged freaks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. That, that, yeah, these people are introduced. In a van, like they drive into town, it's like we need your help, and right. then there's that whole. Or thing. the the rabbit that causes the accident for the toxic waste thing. Right. Why is that not brought back somehow? You like you know the, the, all of a sudden rabbit. there's a giant rabbit. Yeah. You know? yeah, just like Night of the Lepus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which you got to keep bringing that maybe movie more up because nobody knows about it. But <laughs> maybe more deserving of a remake. <laughs> yeah, the giant rabbit, giant bunny rabbits, well, not well, rabbit, just bunny. But rabbit. that also feels like it's in line with this type of movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, them is a big uh, influence, so much so that they have to quote it in the movie itself. It's playing on a TV screen. Um, so, okay, these uh, the accident happens. Uh, the the spiders become large in this guy's spider farm, mm. and they break loose. And we get a little uh, history lesson or entomology lesson, I guess, with spiders. Where he says that there's always the female one of this species is the biggest one, three times bigger than the males. And uh, there's this whole thing I do about like the males will go out and cocoon their victims, liquefy their organs. Well, no, they're bringing back gifts for the female who will then liquefy their organs. And then right. she sucks out the, yeah, so she can drink it right. through a straw. Yeah, just like the killer clowns. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they are getting kind of wrapped in cotton candy in this mm-hmm. movie, basically. Yeah, yeah because n- never at any point does the uh, like the webbing actually feel sticky, mm-hmm. you know, at all. Um, there's also a couple, so we're setting that up, right? This is how these spiders <coughs> are going to work. And then uh, we also find out that there is an abandoned mine in this town, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think that's always also like kind of part and parcel with this type of movie. <laughs> it's do regret. And not just yeah. the town. The town is an abandoned mine. The whole town's built on top of an abandoned mine. Like they even it say, seems like problematic. Yeah, for yeah. like I mean, lots of reasons. Gas could release up and kill you all. No problem. Like, yes. It, oh, yeah, yeah, you would think many problems. Think of a problem you, you name it. You know, it's yeah. going to happen. Like, because these folks are going down into their basement, and literally they are sharing a back wall with uh, the closed mine. Actually, yeah. I mean, it's a closed mine, but at some point, like, the town has a meeting, because you also do this, where uh, there's the mayor is kind of greedy, and he's entered into a contract with, I assume, the military or something for uh, disposal of their toxic waste, which is he's been storing... Uh, in the mine, right next to homes, under the town, of course, you know. Wait, did they 
specified were the were the homes built on top of the mine after it was out of use, or did they pop up like during the use of the mine? During when it was a boom mining boom town. Right. So, is there like a lot of dynamite used in mining, like under these houses? I assume. Right. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. They could have done that. Yeah. Just checking. Well, as are we're set up with the idea that methane does collect in these mines naturally, uh, and so naturally. you know, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> And it's going to be flammable. I think we're told, I don't know how many times. I almost lost count, but I'm, it feels like at least four or you five times. You could do a drinking game. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. You're good. Um, okay. So who's David Arquette? What's his character? And how does he get into the movie? Oof. It's like I said. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean this, he gets here on oof. a bus, Colin. Yeah, there we go. He Lift this back up, Holly, because I think, we're all, I think we're all ill. I think Sean kind of summed it up when he said he's the prodigal son. Like He, he, he was... Got out of town, came back. I'm gonna try and right his wrongs. And yeah, this is the town is built on. Was it McCloud's mine? Is McCormick. It McCormick. Thank you. <laughs> I like. I like that. McCloud. McCormick. I think I'm thinking John Wayne movies. I'm thinking Highlander. What? Yeah. John Wayne, I think. Okay. Um. Yeah. So McCormick. He is Chris McCormick mm. of the McCormick line. Right. Yeah. He has come back to. He's a big deal. Yeah. In, in as much as during the town meeting, he gets that I get to step out of shadows and make a proclamation. Yes. Like that's <laughs> his character in this movie. Yeah. Yes. He was like Chris. Chris, you're back. Yeah. Because uh, his dad died or something, left him the mind. Sorry, Sonny, we're not hiring. The name's not Sonny, it's Chris. Yeah. Chris? Yeah, it's pretty dramatic. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was expecting that to be his mom who didn't, like, recognize him, but unfortunately it's his aunt who, yeah. who, who also, also doesn't, doesn't recognize, recognize him. him. Yeah, who's just like, it's it's me, Chris. Chris McCormick? Like, he almost has to, like, hey, hi. Yeah, but he's not giving over to the, uh, the mayor and letting the mayor, like, oh. store all this stuff. Uh, he's also rekindling a romance with the sheriff. Because is that's Kari Wer- Werther. Um, is he? It, keep, it gets stalled a lot until the very end. <laughs> this is like the worst uh, like version of this plot that maybe we've yeah. ever seen. <laughs> yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> because who is it who's telling him, like, you never told her what you you know felt about her back then, 10 years ago, was his aunt, right? Mm-hmm. right? You have to tell her. And so then he works himself up, like... To go to her house with a bouquet of flowers, so he's going to tell her, you know, like I love you or whatever, and uh, that kind Sorry, of. Sorry, beat happen. up your husband, and because uh, there's a reason he left town. He apparently beat up Jerry Wurr's husband, and then left town to not face the whole thing, right. so she wouldn't find out that her husband cheated on her. It's right. yeah, it's, it's too it's complex so, for for the movie. But it, yeah, I think it's flimsy as fuck. Like that's our, like you got into a fight with someone, so you leave town. Uh, yeah. That seems like an overreaction. There is in this situation, there's, especially if your family basically owns the town. Right. Yeah. Who gives yeah. a fuck? Yeah. There seems to be not like uh, when they're writing this, just like I don't think it really matters. Let's just say he comes, he returns home after ten years. I think that's kind of the thinking that's going into this. Like, yeah. it'd be cool if that was that. And long, there's a mind involved, and there's my buddy Valentine's under this. It's a long time to pine after someone and not move on with your life. Yeah. And ostensibly have no contact, because, right. like, it seems like they have not spoken. That's why it didn't right. feel right. like that. Like, when they yeah. first met, like, there was really no hint that, the you know, that they had feelings for each other. We have to have Scarlett Johansson, as the sheriff's daughter... Tell the sheriff, like, ooh, you still think he's cute or whatever. Mm-hmm. And because I'm like, well, I, I didn't actually get that there was anything going on between them. Yeah. But thank you, Scar Joe, for <laughs> telling us that there's a romantic interest here. And then that does not really pay off, uh, yeah. even though it's brought up later on. You're like, oh, oh I forgot about it. Oh, shit, that's right. right. <laughs> so, uh, this is still going on. So um, the spiders uh, grow. Uh, they go down in the mines. There are miners that are attacked uh, by the spiders, and then eventually the spiders come up, attack a bunch of uh, ostriches. Indeed, yes, the ostrich farm. Right. Apparently... And lots of failed attempts at bringing business into this town by the incompetent mayor. Yes, an ostrich farm, and then our biggest uh, our biggest scene is the mall. Yes, our neon mall. You have to build a mall. If you build it, they will come. Where we have a mall, right. right, yeah. Where we have a mall battle in this movie, and I forgot about that. Yeah, I am so Dawn over mall. I am, yes. I am so over mall battles. This is, oh. yeah, definitely something that has come back recently, but it, 
It's always been a big thing, right? Yeah. Just malls. I mean, yeah. they love to do malls. Because it's a big space. It has yeah. everything you need. It's got food, clothes. Yeah. yeah. It has a familiarity to it because you'd never, you know, like, you're not going to see a bunch of people doing a last stand in a mall like in your real life. So you're like, well, that would be a cool fantasy thing if we can all go to the, the malls. The malls are going to be fucking packed. If yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Every Everyone's mall. going to the mall. Everyone's going to the mall. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Man, our mall doesn't have a sporting goods store, though. We'd be fucked. Yep. I was just thinking that was There's literally just... You're just in the car going, Mall, dicks. Where are we going? Dicks. 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 Go to dicks. Our mall doesn't have anything useful. Hmm. Right. If, if no. For survival, there's yeah. Not the food court nothing. will eventually kill you there anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. There's no. All right, we're all going to Dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, hey, you guys heard it here first. Go to Dicks. Yeah. Like we'll all meet there. Actually, I'd probably go to like Menards or Home Depot or something. Right, yeah. Yeah. Like you can get with weaponry though. You can kill shit with, I'd with go to hardware. Menards. Yeah. yeah. Farm and fleet. I'm going to <laughs> farm and fleet. Nail guns. That's machetes. it. Yeah. Yeah, machetes and nail guns. The game room was still open. Yeah, I thought nobody went there the first time. That's why I closed. That's true. All right, everybody hit dicks and then go to Gander Mountain. We'll be there. That'll be hard building. Oh, it closed. No, we just take over the building. But it's empty. It's empty. The whole there. Yeah, it closed twice. We go. No, no, we get all our stuff. Take it to the Gander building. Hang on. Because nobody's there. Yeah, we've gotten too far into this plan. But no one will suspect Gander Mountain. That's what I'm saying. That's true. Okay. That's what I'm saying, right, what I'm saying because it's just abandoned and nobody's. Yeah. All right. I'll go to Menards. You go to Dick's. I want to go, yeah, And we'll go meet at Gander Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. yeah. Got it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Got it. Our final meeting place. Like Colin. This. All right. Get the food. It is good to have an emergency plan. Yeah. Right you're getting the food. All right, okay. Colin. And it can't just all be barbecue. <laughs> all right. Actually, you gotta get some variety. You're, you're no, you're taking the kale also. You're both getting the kale. I'll make sure we have plenty of fiber to balance. Thank you. All the spam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comes with its own key. Uh, I it. panicked. I just grabbed cash. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, our first uh, major spider attack then is the motocross kids, right? Because how do they tie uh, into the movies? ScarJo is dating Logan Huntsberger. Mm-hmm. Who is the son of the mayor. Even the though, stepson. Oh, yeah. that's why he keeps yes. on calling Wait. him by his Wait. actual name. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's an attack in, uh, like, a gas station. This is where we see, like, the big jumping spiders for the first time. Mm-hmm. And they're taking down these motocross kids as they're zipping across the desert. And I'm like, okay, these spiders could just, like, jump, you know, at the same speed as a bike. Like, eventually these guys, like, this, this is the movie right here. We're going right to the town. It's happening right now, right? Yeah, right. I mean, like, why would they stop? Why wouldn't they just keep on following him? Yeah. When we were seeing, <laughs> when we're watching the jumping spiders, I think that's when it occurred to me. I was like, I think part of the part of what I don't like that takes the creep factor out of it is that they're jumping. Mm. I think it's creepier when they're like on all their legs, like. You know, it's coming, coming at, at you. you. There's no there's suspense. Something, to yeah, this. there's something yeah. creepier about that. Yeah. But we get dynamic shots of spiders jumping right into the camera over and, and over, over and over again, or yes. rearing up and doing that thing that spiders. I mean, I, they, I, as I watch them, they keep doing where they rear up on their hind legs and then they hiss at you or they roar at you. Have you ever had a spider hiss at you? Come on, Colin. I mean, it hasn't everyone. Ever. And then, uh, then they spray their web at you, uh. right? You know, yeah. I would like I would like to find some sort of like spider research data that tells us what they actually sound like because I think spiders <laughs> probably have a sound that we just don't can't hear you know probably. I want to know if anyone's done any research before oh, this they is make good. this movie you know yeah, yeah. tread carefully Holly people are gonna send us I clips send of spider us, sounds yeah, yeah. Now. send us the wave <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll just say we're gonna get spider conversations like, because sometimes they sound like you know kind of like whimpering kind of like squeaky and then sometimes they roar mm. so i want to know what's the closest sound to the actual spider yeah you know? how, how much did these filmmakers actually right. research the real world of spiders and convey that it seems film? a lot <laughs> <laughs> did it not to you well we get a lot of spider exposition i've seen spiders to, uh, just whip and webbing at things oh yeah like yeah that. you should see yeah just uh, on the other side of that wall in this basement no so um that's a story for later. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, there's also a little kid in the movie because oh, yeah. this movie is PG-13. Yeah. It has to cover all quadrants, right? So yeah. we got our kid uh, protagonist. Mm-hmm. Um, Too smart for his own good. He's basically a young Sheldon. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks yeah. like I, I kind of hate kids like this in movies. Like, yeah. This kid isn't that bad. Like, I thought he was yeah, going to be much this... more annoying than he was. He's pretty tolerable. But this, like, 
archetype of kid yes. is I was just going to say that the yeah. character himself, the actor, not He's bad. Fine. It's mm. but I agree. This this the know it all. Yes, the know it all kids. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to watch the goodies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, once you take Tom Noonan out of the movie, because. Tom Noonan only has like, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, from Manhunter and, and Monster Squad and all that. He has and like last a action hero. Yeah, he has a striking profile. Yes, uh, he's in the movie as your spider expert, and then he dies, For three and minutes, so yeah. then it yeah. becomes on this kid who knows everything that he knows. <laughs> right. the apprentice. Let's put the, yeah, let's put the precocious young kid in there. Yeah, he finds a spider leg at some point, right? Then is trying to convince David Arquette, and there's like a whole running gag about how no one ever believes kids when they like look. Uh, there's giant spiders all over the place, and here's the leg. Whereas they could have just made Tom Newton like a Boo Radley type of the town, and then the town has to come around to accepting him because he knows how to save them all. And mm-hmm. he becomes the hero. Yeah. Right, but then you don't get David Arquette bonding with his dream girl's son. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To, to yeah. get that red hot love story going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That red hot through life. Yeah. Smoking. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. No, nobody was smoking when they should have been in this movie. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> yeah. It kind of, uh, well, um, uh, I guess we'll talk about some of that later, <laughs> later on. Uh, so yeah, save the, the good stuff for yeah, later, yeah, Colin. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so help me remember the plot here. Okay, so, where are we at? Uh, uh, David Arquette uh, finds the... There's uh, a spider attack. Yeah. And Am I helping? <laughs> and it's, it's hard to say because they are repetitive. Like, these spiders, once you figure, find out what they do, and then this is probably around the first uh, motorbike attack or soon after it, hey, that's pretty much what they do. Yeah. Like, that is pretty much our interaction. Also... They all attack at once. They all get shot and green blood comes out. Also, I mean, there's that's... a lot of abrupt scene jumping. <laughs> a you lot. Know, you know, like, one second we have David Arquette in the mine with his crew saying, like, okay, this is our plan. We're gonna do this and do this. And then literally the next shot is him picking up the kid hitchhiking. And it's like, okay, well... What happened? Did he, did he spend oh. the day in the mine? Well, he owns like, the mine. He just told them what to do and left. That's what it seems like. But mm-hmm. it's it's just very abrupt. Yes. Lots of, lots so, of yeah. abruptness in this yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, agreed. I know, because abruptly, I feel like the next major set piece is getting everybody oh. to the... Like, we're being attacked, and we have to go tell people that we're being attacked. But uh, the sheriff... No, no, it's not the sheriff. There's a big uh, centerpiece explosion oh, the radio. in the middle of your movie where the, a tanker truck gets uh, attacked by spiders... And knocks down the, the telephone yeah, pole, the so the whole out. town has no communication. Right. Ah, there we go. Right. And so, how you got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? Because yeah, at this point, at first it was started with animals being taken out cats, dogs, ostriches. And now it's right. moved on to people are slowly being taken out, right? Yeah. And we know this because Dougie Doug has been listening to the, uh, like the police band, and he believes, of course, that these are aliens. And he's obsessed with the anal probe, or he's afraid of the anal probe, or, or something, because he keeps bringing that up, because, God yeah. damn it, that's the funniest joke in the movie. I guess. <laughs> okay. It, it's so, so when you're talking about aliens, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I mean, we've made an anal probe joke or two, but we haven't carried it on that long. See our fire in the sky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 We've, we've done it, but not like this. <laughs> right. So they decide, our heroes decide, we got to go to his uh, Dougie Doug's trailer where he broadcasts out of, because that's how we're going to be able to tell the, the town that they're under attack by big giant spiders. Because the town just listens to the radio all the time. But there's only the one station. Because I get the idea that they're surrounded by mountains, because yeah. this becomes a plot point yes. later on. Like, in order yeah. to call for help, you have to go up high enough to broadcast over the, the mountain. So in their little basin... They have just his radio station. Mm-hmm. This is all they have to listen to. Oh, Jesus, just turn it off. Is he on 24 hours Do a they day? Not have Does C- he play wait, wait, music? Do we have CDs? We had CDs, right? Oh, it was like, yeah, peak CD time. Yeah. We're all still MP3s. Yeah. <laughs> Get it together, folks. Maybe you don't have it. to listen Nobody's to the crazy dude on the, the radio. radio. Yeah. Well, clearly someone is, because she's got Lincoln Park and P.O.D. posters on her wall. Right? <laughs> <That's very laughs> but I think she's the one who's got the CDs. She's right. the only one who's like... She's got that big binder. Like, binder. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Colin. And there's, uh, we have a pro, uh, like era appropriate music uh, playing on the soundtrack in this movie. Was there a soundtrack album? Anybody, uh, anybody pick up the Eight Legged mm-hmm. Freaks or original it. motion picture soundtrack? I'm so sorry. Look for it on Waxworks probably at some point. Oh, okay. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, no, you said no it, but now it'll happen because they'll put anything on yeah. the Yeah. Featuring the Creed sound alike and all that stuff. Uh, so, um, 
they go to Dougie Doug's place, right? And they like start broadcasting that, yes. you know, hey, we all got to go to the mall, right? Was that the thing? It was like, we got to go to the mall. Because I think at one some point she was being chased and telling all the townspeople, like, we got to go to the – because the spiders are coming even right then, right? Like, you got people out in the car and they're like, you got to stay in there and don't move because the spider – big giant spiders are outside. And she's telling people to go to the mall. And I'm like, this seems unsafe because you don't know where you're sending people. Yeah. You know, you don't know what the status is of <laughs> the mall. Been, it right. could have been already it on fire been with spiders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, go there. <laughs> I've been here with but, yeah. this, but they are listening to the child at this point. That's true. Like, he's pretty much taking the reins because everybody else in the movie is an idiot. And the uh, mall joke uh, pays off because Leon Rippey, the mayor, is standing there watching all these people suddenly show up <laughs> to the mall. Yeah. As, <laughs> it is kind of funny that they just kind of drive in and then run screaming into the mall. <laughs> like, they, <laughs> the store's <laughs> finally open! <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little bit humorous, but... Yeah, and then they get in there, and there's the big rah rah speech that we're gonna, you know, have the because uh, this is the sheriff, it's Kari Wurr, because we're like, again, uh, who is the protagonist, central protagonist of this movie? Is it David Arquette? Because I'm like, what does he really do? Is Kari Werther the one who's actually like making the decisions that move the plot forward? It's the, yeah, def- David Arquette is definitely not moving us anywhere. I think he's trying to smolder. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to do. Because he's got... I mean, David Arquette, unless he's yelling... I don't know, his acting range isn't great, I'm going to say. No. This is also why he's not a leading but, man. And, and yeah, and that's the thing. He's not a leading man. If you're going to have this character, it's got to be, like, a ruggedly handsome dude. You know? He's right. got to have that, that charisma. Yeah. David Arquette doesn't have that charisma. I would be interested in seeing all the people that passed before they landed on David Arquette. Because I feel like it was a lot. Like, I feel like he was not their first choice, right? It seems like, like a weird choice. Yeah. 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 Actually, a lot of the casting just feels weird. But I guess because they're trying to be a little bit offbeat, right? Yeah, like, I think they're trying to be quirky, a little offbeat. Yeah. Who they're bringing into this. Because they're trying, like I said, they're trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what's strange about it. It's like when they did these type of movies before, they were basically serious, mm-hmm. you know, which is, I guess, why we kind of like them when we watch them now. It's like, well, this is goofy, but serious, you know. Right. Uh, now it's like, well, we're making fun of it. And then, I mean, the next logical step is your Sharknado and your sci-fi movie mm-hmm. uh, stuff. Um, It turns out, of course, that the mall is also, who would have guessed it, built on... A mine. Uh, we get, I mean, this is like the big, what's the name of the comedian dude? I'm forgetting his name. The, uh, Gallagher. Like, no, no, no. The Gary guy Top. in this movie who's the, the deputy. Oh, man. I don't know. Oh, I man. Don't know that I'm, I, am, I don't know, I don't know okay. that guy's name. Uh, well, didn't anyway. Know, didn't realize he was a thing. Like, yeah, no, he I was back. I saw yeah. some of his stand up stuff, but. Uh, oh. He's uh, Alan wa- choosing to watch comedy. Yeah, stand-up comedy. No, do I choose to? This stuff. Yeah, but keep in mind he's also you. watching a stand-up that none of the rest of us have heard. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I saw a YouTube video. He he was on a microphone. It seemed like he was in there, front there of the crowd. There was a crowd. wall behind him. <laughs> <laughs> no one At laughed. The comedy there was a store. Stool? Yeah. I don't know. Um, but they end up, uh, you know, on his compact 96. Right. <laughs> Sorry, <Charles. laughs> I'm trying to like re imagine what actually happened in the scene other than like big spiders are coming in, but I think people are shooting I at them. That's why that's the problem with this movie and why we have trouble recollecting it right now, because it is a lot of the same thing over and over again. We're just different locations like the spiders almost attack the exact same way every time they attack right at this point we're just we're in the mall and the civilians are arming themselves with various mall items yeah Yeah, just like dawn of the dead literally dawn of the dead Uh, yeah and there's a kind of a mission where they're trying to get one phone call out so they have to climb the tower on top Mm -hmm. of it um the spiders also attack up there they're trying to call the army (laughs) yes they're trying to call the army they're trying to call my own one nobody believes them obviously that's where david arquette actually has like his best david arquette line of the movie (laughs) Right. Said that we're being invaded. And he like loses his shit. And you're like, oh, that's David Arquette. Right. That's the David Arquette I know. I was like, that's the David Arquette I know. And exactly why he's not leading man material. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sorry, but there was like some breakaways with like uh, there's you know like the the kindly old uh, barber shop guy, the barber, right? Mm -hmm. 
arming himself with a pitchfork after his friend gets attacked by a giant. I mean, that's basically all it is. Is there scenes? You're right. Oh, no, there, that scene is horrible. Nothing, you can't really right. describe yeah. this shit because, well, no. right, it happens. Well, there. when you were talking about the, the barber shop, the barber with the pitchfork, he just, he walks out of a, like, nothing's exciting. It, this movie's right. boring. This movie's very boring. Yeah. Because it's the same thing over and over again. He walks yeah. out. He's in the camping area, and a spider attacks him, like you would expect yeah. it to and do. They, and they focus on very strange characters that you don't really understand, like, the weight that they hold. Like, yeah. like there's the random the yeah. random guy they focus on that's in the diner, that, like, they, you follow yeah. him out of oh, the yeah, diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, like, hat, what, the hat. With the hat, like, yeah. the trucker-looking guy. The What's crossbow. the point of that? The only thing that I could see was when when the call went out, you know, from the on the radio broadcast that, like, they're giant spiders. He's the guy who's like, <laughs> Giant spiders, and then you have My to follow ass. him. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he turns around with his giant spiders, and then now we're following him Com- for the rest would, of the movie. Well, it'd be nice if they gave him something <laughs> like that. Nothing. They're like, I think they gave him the trucker head just so you knew, like, oh, there's a trucker head guy. He's doing something again. Yeah. Oh, there's this guy. Because they want us, I think they want this, like, cadre of characters who are, you know, quirky, and you know them, and you laugh because they're getting into these situations, mm-hmm. but we don't know them. Right. At all. You remember movies like The Last Starfighter where somehow they actually made a like little community? Yes. Where you... <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. It's a really good movie. said that was such desperation. Yeah, yes. yes. Can we watch it now? Yes. I'm, I'm kind of with her. Let's, let's, let's that was directed it. by Nick Castle, so I mean, <laughs> lots of reasons to love that movie. But... Can I get, there was a lot of neck snap in it's, there for a second. It, I would, I'll go to bed for The Last Starfighter. It's got beautiful practical effects. It's got, yeah, well, all these it's characters got everything in the trailer park come doesn't. together. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's But a, they're all distinctive yeah. in their own yeah. way. It's like, this movie, And I they're think, nice, and they're nice to each other. I'm like, this movie, like... But maybe that's together. the thing that these movies do. They try to endear us to these characters, but they're not necessarily nice to each other. They don't feel like they have, like, a shared existence, no. as we were talking before. See, I don't feel like this one endeared me to like anybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're saying. I think they want you to, but yeah, oh no, definitely did not. Robert was an asshole. Why the fuck do I give a shit about anything that happens to him? Like, the one scene he had, he was kind of a prick, so why do I care? No, I think this movie's made for the spider action. I think this is why they think you're going to go see this movie. Come see some hot spider action. (laughs) (laughs) Some hot spider action. They thought they had it. I mean, they are... Well, they are webbing a uh, bath towel... Clothe Scarlett Johansson to yeah. a wall. A seventeen-year-old one. So that's, yeah, that's right. right yeah. So I don't have. like their purpose was not. I don't think character work in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was that spider stuff, which you know, unfortunately. But what, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So there's um. Yeah, because even then, you know, in that scene that you're talking about, David Arquette comes in supposedly to the rescue. He also gets webbed to the wall. So it's mm-hmm. Carrie Werther who comes in with a shotgun and is able to blast the spider away. Is she the is he the best she can do? Like, she can do better than this, right? <laughs> is think, she yeah. going to end up with this guy? Like, well, you're supposed to think, back. I think in these movies, that like the town is so small and so insular. Everybody knows everybody. And she's just like, none of them. So he's like the uh, one who comes he's the in. the best from, option? Yeah. yeah. It, who's, this well, is like new blood, kind of. Yeah, this place does suck. Like, yeah. why aren't they selling their property and leaving? Mm-hmm. I agree with See, the crooked mayor. Sell the shit and yeah. get out of here. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm looking back on that really harsh moment when ScarJo is, like, telling her mom she doesn't want to wind up like her, like, in a trailer trash town. I get it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and like, okay, even if people were nice and you had good dating options, your whole town's still built on a fucking mine. Like, yeah. you know what right. I'm saying? What, do, what are the redeeming qualities of this town? Right. Like, I'm not seeing any. No. No. <laughs> well, as far as uh, character arcs, though, go, we gotta I'm get... Sorry? Well, some people <laughs> have... Some characters have to get their comeuppance. For instance, uh, well, you have true. the mayor who is planning to sell the town out. So what happens to the mayor? What's the termination of his? Uh, how does he get his? He's webbed. I would say absolutely it's... nothing. Because then they find him and they cut him loose. Yeah, then yeah. he's fine. No, yeah, nobody gets really. Oh, the mall explodes. Yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> Financially, yeah. he's ruined. Financially, he's ruined. What You're a right. great idea. Yeah, there you go. He's like, not my mall. And it's blowing up. Yeah, because... he stopped just short of saying, <laughs> I'm ruined. Yeah. 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 No, because this is uh, another thing I forgot. This is a PG-13 movie. So people don't get eaten, ripped apart, what have you. It's not gory because there's nothing real in this movie, you know? Mm, like, that. there's no gore because it's, it's just, all yeah, CGI. It's just gross. We just get lots of spider green goo. Yeah, a lot of spider green blood. Yeah. yeah. Because it's dripping uh, on the people's faces. Yeah, that was yeah. Gross. it's pretty gross. Yeah. 
what happens to the uh, the mayor's stepson because he has to get his comeuppance because he attacks ScarJo in the truck. She tasers him in the balls. Uh, then he spends he has he like pisses his himself. Yes, he, and he pisses yeah. himself right, and then spends the rest of the movie wandering around in the mines on his dirt bike. And how uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, how uncomfortable. In his piss pants. Oh, that's yeah. why I leaned over to Colin and said, he must smell bad. Yeah. Just having been in the mines yeah. all day, plus S- having pissed yourself. Sweaty, pissy, uh, mind dirts. I mean, he deserved it. I thought they were giving him, like, the... Uh, were they giving know, him a redemption arc? I thought they were, because, like, he's going to be the guy who comes in, and, like, now he's spent all this time, like, dealing with the mm-hmm. spiders and doesn't know that, like, everybody else is dealing with the spiders. So when he shows up, he's, like, coming he's in... no and longer a sexual predator. Yeah, and now he's, like... Okay, I'm gonna like save you guys because I've been battling these things, and I don't remember even what happened. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Anyone? I don't. Anyone? I, don't I, 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 was, I honestly don't. Remember. I was following you on that journey. I, was like, I, I literally to... think he drove up and was like, "Hey guys, I'll come yeah, with you. no, like to be honest, they take his dirt bike and they and they go be heroes, and like that's it. I thought they took his dirt bike because he died. No, I don't know. No, no, they no, just no. took his dirt. No, when they, when they get, this. <laughs> yeah, when they when they find the mayor, that's his stepdad. So he comes over and he like helps like take the webs off because that's his only family, basically. Yeah, yes. And then they're like, oh, by the way, we need your dirt bike, and that's it. And yeah. then you get a shot of him later on, yeah. standing right next to Scar Joe as things end. I think. Yeah, yeah. like he's okay. fine. So screenwriters, <laughs> I mean... we're talking to you out here, like. These were exasperated. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. If you want to know what not to do, or maybe not that, do more than this. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You got to weave your, your yeah. plot threads together, your character dynamics. They got to have payoffs that are dramatic and not if just kind of like, have, If you're going to have a, a guy sexually assault a girl, we need more than just he pisses his pants after she tases him. Yeah. yeah. We need more. A little bit more than that. We need well, yeah, because either I suppose you have to have like the spider, like you know, uh, he has to get it in a in a spectacular way. His the stepdad, the mayor, has to get it in a spectacular way. Mm-hmm. I mean, in order to be satisfied. Yes, not and that we're horrible human beings. No, no, no. This is a movie, and you want that kind of payoff. Yeah, you want to have some <laughs> satisfaction yeah. from the thing if you're, you're watching. Not, if you're not going to give us that, then don't make him the creep that assaults her. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. then what's the yeah. point in that? What's the point? You know, it's no like point. You it's do those scenes. The taser. That's literally it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and which then, comes back later on, but it's not. None of that's worth it. No, we didn't Ugh. need that. Like, she can give her the taser and be like, here, you're going to need this. And then, like, okay, mom. But then she didn't need it with her boyfriend, right. but she needs it later on. But Maybe. you can still have that. I thought she would, like, tase a spider. Yeah. yeah. Like, Wait, you can seems- still have that. Did that not happen? <laughs> I remember when she was getting webbed, she was reaching for the taser? She didn't reach it. She didn't get it. Yeah, that's she right, because Kari Werther came in and shot it. Yeah. So, right. And then, because there's been a whole build-up to, God damn it, there's methane in those mines. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Check off methane, yeah. yeah. As, as the heroes are now in the mines and, like, running away, we have the threat that uh, Aunt Gladys, who's a smoker, is going to light a cigarette at some point and blow everybody up. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to get attacked by spiders. Somebody's going to shoot mm-hmm. something Can't and it's going to blow up. But where is... Scar Joe's taser in this in this scene, <laughs> but that's going to be the thing that actually detonates the when they find the generator. So they actually use her taser. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank God. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Because they take the generator it has no gas, so they need some sort of charge for it. And she says, "Mom, what about this? You're a genius." Goddamn, those so, screenwriters yeah. are just fantastic people who thought of everything, dotted every i and crossed every t. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do they rig the explosive to uh, blow up? Because this is what the, the ultimate plan becomes, right? We're going to get all of our uh, friends out of the tunnels, and we are going to detonate and hopefully the, out of the them methane. All. Right. I don't even know if they did that. Are they checking? You're on the honor system. There's giant spikes. <laughs> get out. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Save if you're not out, I'm ass. sorry. We're going to blow you up. Yeah. <laughs> like you should be out by now. <laughs> They didn't know they were going to blow everybody up. Well, I mean, <laughs> that was like, no, we got to blow everybody up. And then there's a parallel I don't think they story. Knew they were do most of the time. Yeah, and you're like, well, I hope these two timelines work out at the same time. Otherwise, somebody's getting blown up because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, well, there's also that scene where um, David Arquette like finds his aunt still alive, and. He checked, oh, yeah. like, like a couple are... other bodies in the cocoons. And then <laughs> later on, he tells the cops, like, no, they weren't alive. I checked them all. <laughs> oh, that's you, did not. you did not check them all. You checked, like, three. <laughs> you checked, like, three in a room full of them. Oh, yeah. shit. 
It is one of those selective things because we see like a spider at some point, like putting the old uh, whatever it's the Starship Troopers like uh, leg thing straw into somebody. Oh uh, yeah. Psh- Oh, don't it give up. it that much credit. It was it was one of those when you stab a person bet- between their arm and their body, like you really stab them with a sword and some shit. Like it's kind of like that. They just yeah. put the sucker behind the dude, and that was that. Yeah, there was like a big male spider before the big female spider, right? The big male spider was the tarantula. Yes, yeah. He, he was like the battering ram. He would get the smaller spiders into right. areas. Right. Um, what happened to him? I don't remember. Last I saw him, he was coming in through the gate at the front of the mall. Did he explode or something? I think he probably blew up in the yeah. mall. They shot him a bunch of times. You know what? This movie didn't he care was about on the roof of a, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Ask the question. They don't care. But we get a spectacular ending. Is David Arquette and... Uh, no. Is uh, it... Wait. Who's on the bike at the David end? David Arquette and Gladys. Gladys. David Arquette and Gladys are driving through the tunnel as it's exploding in a way that only movie explosions happen where, like, one chamber of a tunnel explodes tunnel at a time. Fire. Yeah. Yep. And the yeah. spiders are all getting blown up, but our heroes are somehow able to outrun a fireball. Well, were they? Well, they were well, yeah. fire. The stunt people definitely did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were. Jesus. Fully on fire. Yeah. Wow. Poor Gladys. I, I, can you just imagine the other being like, is this the only shot we have? Yeah. And then be like, you, all right. You full on could not see Gladys for a couple seconds. No, seven, Gladys right? is she was, fucking she dead. She was completely engulfed in flames. Yeah. Yeah. But comes out okay. She's fine. I know. She kept yeah. the football going on. She and, but guess what? She kicked that habit, Colin. She's no longer smoking. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I mean, as you would. <laughs> Leads to explosions. Is this a message yeah. movie? Aren't they all? Oh, boy. <laughs> Toxic waste is bad. Here we go. We should get rid of all smoking of our nuclear bad. plants. Smoking's bad. Even though it's clean energy. Yep. Smoking is bad. Don't spiders go bad. breeding giant spiders. That's okay. generally a bad a idea. Don't lose your British identity to your boyfriend in the, in the front seat of his truck. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. do that. The afternoon in don't the do that. Yeah. So many le- life lessons to be learned by this uh, remarkable after school special movie. Um, and then, uh, so what's our closer here? I mean, uh, uh, basically, um, Great oh job. shit, you know what we have forgotten? The gold? The gold. Yeah. Tell Who me about cares? the gold. Yeah. What does it matter? <laughs> like, apparently, <laughs> apparently David Arquette's dad, the owner of the mine, at some point found this like mythical vein of gold throughout the mine and died before he was able to share the secret with anybody. So... <laughs> They've been bankrupting the town trying to find this, like, mythical vein of gold. And wouldn't you know it, when he finds Gladys behind him, glimmering in the in the light. My dad it, was right. There is gold. Right. There is gold in them there hills. There yeah. is. There is. Wow. Wow. This is screenwriting I symmetry know. almost that, you know, know, who could have predicted. Don't know what the town said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoopee. Yeah, I mean, that's basically, yeah, that's... Well, uh, apparently they went back in, because now he's got gold teeth as he's talking on the radio. Doug. Doug, Doug, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess. I guess. Well, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> and we end on him laughing maniacally into the camera. Well, he gets like, to tell us, like, but, the, you know, it's like, but there was gold in the, in the cave. But that's a tale for another day. And you're like, who the fuck? What, are there giant spiders in that movie? Giant rabbits, something. Who the right. fuck cares about the? Yeah, um, and then we fade yeah. to black, and then uh, we Thank get uh, a rendition of Itsy Bitty's. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, Over that goes on for quite a while. <laughs> that has many verses, uh, which we are not entirely sure. Itsy Bitty Spider are part of the uh, actual. This movie has music done by uh, John Ottman, Oscar-winning John Ottman. Uh, what do you win for? He won for editing of Bohemian Rhapsody. That's right. Oh, we got the worst we edited about movie. This yes. Oh god. And I will bring it up every time yeah. for Oscar winning job. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we talked about one of the worst edited movies I've ever seen. Well, we talked about it. It was because he directed. Uh, what, Val- was it Valentine? Or no, it was Urban, Urban Legend, Legend Two. Two. Yeah. He, he did. Uh, he's done music for a lot of movies and editing as well. Uh, he did the music for H Two O until it got replaced. Um, mm-hmm. Who was singing "Itsy Bitsy Spider" at the end? I missed it. It sounded like a Tom Waits sound alike. Like oh, yeah, not, they, were, definitely was not they were Tom trying Waits, to be Tom Waits, Nick Cave, yeah. but not. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were they not. It, no. No. No, I think most of us left. Colin sat there and decided to absorb the pain. I was yeah. like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I mean, there were no, so like many I said, verses. That was the insult <laughs> so on top of injury. Yeah. 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 No. It was. It was kind of rough. 
Uh, <laughs> but God damn it, I'm dedicated. And I'm there. To, and then I was like, it's going to be the last song. Yeah, he didn't I think move. We, there were just tears running yeah. down his face. Um, he couldn't read it through the tears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I can't see he was performing this, but I hate you. <laughs> oh, it was a great time. This is a movie released by Warner Brothers. It was like a major Hollywood movie. Uh, Thirty million dollar budget made forty million. That's there you it. go. And we've all heard about it. Yeah, or yeah. seen it. Yeah. I saw it. Screen Factory released it. Yeah, I mean, so it's uh, it's, it's, it's well there. regarded. It, uh, it, well. it was a cult, cult film. It uh, happened. Kinda, yeah. It happened. I don't know. It's got its fans. I'm sure. It does. Yeah. It doesn't because of its sure exposure. It probably. Yeah. Sure. We went up in our I was like, we'll find out. Yeah. 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 Great segue, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, in order to read some of your mail, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He looks like CGI today. Like bad CGI. Uh, bad CGI? Yeah. Leaping Igors. That's the next thing we got to watch out for. That'd be terrifying. Well, oh, Night of the Igors. The what? Night of the Igors. Night of the, night of the Igors. <laughs> I like that. Night of the Igors. Yeah. One day you're going to turn on this show and it is going to be just, just going to be Igor. Igor. Four Igors. Four Igors. Yeah. Uh, like Igor? Oh, yes. Igor. Igor. <laughs> Uh, well, we want to remind you how you can participate on this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is go on over to our social media. Go to Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. It's not social media, but you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About- email is the socialist of media. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We share all of our emails. Well, I guess we do. Okay, so uh, about tonight's movie, Eight-Legged Freaks, Peter Gatt writes in and says, I rewatched this recently. It hasn't dated well, in my opinion, but saying that it's still a goofy fun watch. It's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Real goofy. Some of those words were correct. <laughs> yes. The uh, Film Effect podcast says, this is just a fun, silly movie. I'm looking forward to you guys listening to you guys, hopefully having fun with it as well. Keep it up, gang. We're loving everything you do for the genre. Aw, thanks. Oh, thanks for this being your last episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the B- it is silly. You were right about that. <laughs> uh, B-Movie Poster Vault says, good choice. In today's troubled times, you sometimes need a movie that doesn't take itself seriously, stars likable characters, and above all, is fun. I've I seen would agree this. with all of that. <laughs> you says, do need those in a movie. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You do need those in a movie. Yes. You're correct. <laughs> He says, I've seen this a number of times, and I always enjoy the tongue-in-cheek nature of the film. I also recommend Big Ass Spider, which was a very pleasant surprise, as it's usually lumped in with bottom-of-the-barrel CGI monster crap fests. Big Ass Spider. Again, the words that are being used <laughs> yeah, there. are was, very accurate. Spiders 3D was also like the one with the big spider between them. On the building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a thing. Or it was, was that like, Big Ass Spider? Was that, that Tibor, was... Tibor Takish? The director oh, of The God. Gate and I, Madman, didn't we talk about? Was that Spy? Okay, well, I have to go back. Oh, I'm not man. sure. I think there was. Uh, Andrew John says, I always have a blast with this movie. I remember I was in junior high and they were pushing the computer video game for it during the release. And in computer class, my buddy and I would just be shooting giant spiders instead of working. Good time. Oh, okay. Like this movie time. suddenly makes sense. If it's just a vehicle for a video game... That makes sense. A PC like, the, game. like the PC game was the priority, and they're like, well, we'll just make a movie. Yeah, wow. I don't really remember that, remember that yeah. one, but okay. Uh, Owen Johnson says, I remember this movie came out on DVD around the time when Lord of the Rings The Two Towers came out in theaters. It was around Christmas time. My dad rented the movie, and while we were waiting to go to the theater for Lord of the Rings in the evening, we watched. Eight-legged freaks. Oh. The vibe was awesome. Sitting in our living room with the decorations my mom put up, our gifts sitting under the Christmas tree. Those were the days. P.S. Oh. Now looking back on it, why did the spiders make goofy noises? Yep. Maybe it's the grown-up in me, but I never noticed it when I was little. That sounds like a really nice memory. Yeah. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I think they're going, uh, they're trying to get that gremlins route. I don't think they... Uh, Went as far as they should have. Yeah, they're taking the edge off to do it. Yeah. I think that they are trying to yes. make it less. It's wild to think this was in theaters the same time as the Two Towers. Well, on, on video. On, on video. video. On video? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So well, it had been out in like the summer or something, and the video on Christmas. I thought the Two Towers was like a Christmas release. I thought mm-hmm. most of the... Okay. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but like, to think about how 
both movies have aged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, cork wine. <laughs> well, and yeah. like screw top yeah. wine. Yeah. <laughs> like that owl wine from all these. Yeah. I like box wine. <laughs> no, box one's great. Okay. Uh, Adam Kaler says, I usually look forward to a week when I haven't seen the movie you're watching, but Killer Spiders, I'm going to spend the entire time watching my back and above my head. Why not a Beethoven movie? A huge property damage bill can be just as scary as large spiders. Like, like are we yeah. talking like uh, Composer or dog, are we talking Dog yeah. here? Because either or. How many of those are there? Oh, like oh, six. a lot. There you go. Like the they stopped. Two are good. And then like Airbud did real good. They're like, we can direct the video <laughs> of this shit, and they yeah. kept making more. Awesome. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says this is actually a pretty pretty entertaining ride, genuinely fun, and so much better than what you would think based on this title. I'm not a fan of the spider speech, even though it's meant to be goofy. But it's one of the few things about it that knock it down slightly for me. Still a worthy watch. The spider speech. Spiders. Just the, 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 uh, the squeaking. The, the and the, oh, when they race past, like a wee. Oh, yeah. Like that. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, you know what? If you're looking for a giant spider horror comedy, you can't do much better than this. The effects oh, probably fuck. don't hold up anymore. <laughs> and there's still some really good sequences with giant spiders chasing dirt bikers and an ending that was clearly inspired by Dawn of the Dead. I've also promised to show my kids this movie at some point, as I think it's a nice little intro horror movie. It is a kids movie. Yes. <laughs> kids would probably They'll like it because they have that child protagonist that they can identify mm-hmm. with. So. That's why, that yeah. is why he's there. Yep. Uh, Travis Legler says, okay, this is a classic moron movie, as Stephen King would say. It's goofy, crazy, and fun. Don't take it seriously and just enjoy the ride. It's a fun party movie. This is something to watch with friends and laugh. Enjoy, freak show. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't sorry. Don't We're not laughing at comments right now. I know, yeah. laughing at our audience. Wait, see, like, nobody who, okay, yeah, sorry. Jonathan Holt says, yes. And here I thought I was the only person that liked this movie. I saw it for my 15th birthday with some friends, and I don't think they ever forgave me. Sean, you're going to do a lot of explaining. <laughs> Andrew Bradford says, I watched this film numerous times in grad school. It holds up well for what it is, but it, what it really does well is add to the desert meets big bugs genre. It's a fun movie with pleasant effects and good humor thrown into the mix. I've always had an affinity for movies showcasing monsters in the Southwest desert like Tremors, Tarantula, and Them. Colin, I can feel you speaking these words directly to me. Survivor numbers are going to change. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> it does feature desert and bugs. That's true. <laughs> true. It is part of that genre. Yeah. All right, well, Real things. DJ Dogman Fish is springing a question on it, so here you go. What is your perfect creatures mutated by toxic waste double feature? I'm going to say humanoids from the deep has to be in there yeah. at some point. That's a good one. Was Piranha, were they? No, they were genetically uh, modified. What about Kingdom of the Spiders? Were they? they no, they weren't. No, it was them, pesticide, right? No. right, or whatever? Pesticide, yeah. That's right. right. Um, yeah. Angered by Deet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think King, Kingdom of the Spiders and Night of the Lepus is like... That's Night of the Lepus is... Was that, that's a uh, good feature. Yeah, that is a perfect yeah, double that feature. Is a good feature. That would be great. Yeah. yeah, that would be... Yeah, I don't know if that falls in the parameters, but that's where we're going. Yeah, yeah that's, that's our answer. <laughs> How about last week's Get movie? Get us to host it. We'll host that too. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Night of the, the Lepus, year. Kingdom of the Spiders yeah. for Easter. Which uh, one is from the first or from second? Right. Depends. Lepus opens. Yeah. Um, about uh, last week's movie, which was Dressed to Kill, Steve Carney says, I haven't seen or I hadn't seen Dressed to Kill in about four years. Rewatching it a few months ago, I loved it just as much as when I saw it the first time. Out of all of Brian De Palma's Hitchcock homage movies, it's my favorite. That's a good one. Uh, Feather Wilson says, Okay, so we asked a question on social media like, do you think it was inspired by Giallo movies? Uh, Feather Wilson said, I mean, there's a sequence that's straight up from a Giallo film, so yes. And he posted a clip that was a comparison of an elevator murder in Dress to Kill versus an elevator murder in Case of the Bloody Iris, uh, which you should see. Uh, About the previous week's movie was uh, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Art by Queasy says, is that Jason Underwater statue still in Minnesota? Yes, I believe so. Okay, well, I did some research this week, and it turns out that there's a TV uh, news broadcast on it that they went down to remove it. What? And it was gone. (gasps) 
Oh, oh, spooky! Yeah. I some, thought it was still did there. Did some telekinetic girl come and bring him out of the water? I don't know. But there was also Where's another the one. Minnesota carry. There's another one in New yeah. Mexico <laughs> yeah, or that's Arizona. That's a National Enquirer headline. But that one also disappeared. As well. <gasps> it's the Minnesota <laughs> carry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. Jason only stays down there for so long. Yeah. You can't keep him. Uh, there. Mm-hmm. All right, so <laughs> that's a great. Uh, what does the Minnesota carry? Yeah. Jason's dash <laughs> disappears. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> page three, page six. <laughs> we already we already know how it happened. We just have to find out who did it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Sure. Where, yeah. Um, so I guess uh, thank you all very yes, much. Thank you for very much for writing in. Um, now we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Eight Legged Freaks, starting with Holly. What did you think about? Eight-legged freaks. Nah, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah, no, that's it. It sucked. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I was unprepared. Uh, <laughs> what if I call on you first? <laughs> what are we going to do that? <laughs> um, yeah, man. Um... <laughs> yeah. I mean, she got it, Colin. <laughs> well, do you want to pass it to me? For she got it. You can. can. <laughs> well, I was trying to think that... Colin, well, well, you don't... There's no deep analysis needed, I don't think, tonight. No, because I think... Yeah, uh, that's I can't what I'm like, this Did we, did we cover it already? I think we I, we outlined all the stuff that's wrong with it. Um, it just kind of... The problem with these movies is is that at this point... Maybe this is... Because I, I always sit there and go, like, is this me? Have I just seen too many goddamn movies that at this point... Like, I, you're like, give me a giant monster movie. Yeah. Or give me, you know, a mutated monster movie. It's like... There are scores of good ones yes. that we have seen to choose from. And then when you watch this, you're like, I'm fucking falling asleep. This is so boring. And you're like, but why? It's not like incompetently <laughs> so made. But why? But why? <laughs> but why? You know, because so? I'm watching it and I'm like, well, I mean, it has, it looks like a movie. There's people doing stuff that, you know, they do in movies. It needs more, Colin. It's got to do more than just look like this a movie. This is a moving picture. I yeah, it is a moving perfect. picture. But it's the problem. I don't know. It was bad. There may have been 23 frames per second in this movie. I don't know. Especially during the visual effects. So yes. they, in the movie, the, the, the problem that I have with it, it is so shop-worn, right? Because it came from an era where, obviously, <clears throat> they're aiming for a broad audience, you know, and so they're taking this material and they're kind of sanding all of it down so it's just this, you know, nice... Inoffensive. Yeah, and you're like... <laughs> It's boring as fuck. I mean, there's nothing to it. I mean, you could, I suppose, with character work, you could have done something to rescue it, but uh, they don't. It's just, it's there, and there's a bunch of CGI. I, I guess that's the biggest crime that it commits. It's a movie about spiders that, as an arachnophobe, I did not have uh, any kind of reaction. That means you failed. That's the ultimate <laughs> act. Like, I, because I'm they're of not, and you did not really make there. Though. Right. Uh, so, Michaela, oh, that's a no. Uh, <laughs> skip eight legged freaks, Michaela, what do you think? Yeah, I agree, Colin. I'd, I am afraid of spiders too, and there's no suspense to the spiders in this movie aside from that opening scene a little bit. But, and, and like, the, I understand the CGI is like nearly 20 years old. So yeah. It's not going to look good. But, like, everything about this movie feels artificial and inex- and that makes it inaccessible, you know? And it just. It feels low brow and low budget, but it isn't low budget, and that's like a, another sin of cinema. You like, how are you going to make something thirty million dollar budget and yet it looks like a fucking sci fi movie, like and feels like a sci fi movie? It just doesn't feel like the craftsmanship and the care is there, you know. And I, I was bored by it, and you know, we've watched Kingdom of the Spiders, we watched Arachnophobia, and that was effective for all of us when we watched both those movies, like. And we had a, we had a good time with both of them as well. Mm-hmm. And I I think like as far as creep out spider movies go, like you got so many better options than this. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, making them giant does not make them scary. No, no, no actually, it yeah, it doesn't no. make them no. scarier. No. No. Big no. spiders, then they become like an animal or yeah. something. And you're no, like, the jumping yeah. ones are, are <laughs> if they're this big and they jump on you, yeah, then, yeah. Well, creepy. The, what what made Kingdom of the Spiders so terrifying is that they would work together to like overtake you. Is it, it was right. like hordes of them, normal sized hordes. Like this is proof that William Shatner has more talent in his pinky. Yeah, than yeah. Any of the spiders. We need more Rack yeah. Hansen. Rack uh, Hansen. We had the same kind of criticism about the Meg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. Sometimes you can, you can go too big. It is possible. It is possible. Uh, and this, yeah, I 
I was, Except for Godzilla. I've always been put off by like the tone of this movie, and I was right to be put off by it. It didn't win me over. It didn't I didn't prove me wrong. I thought maybe you know maybe the poster was misleading. Maybe it's going to be something. No, yeah. always, was, possible. No, I, always I, possible. I love a horror comedy. This is neither. And I'm starting neither. to think that like you don't need very many horror comedies. We got like three good ones, three or four good ones, and that's good. We don't need any more. Like yeah. we're good on them. Yeah. Like, and we tend to hold on to those pretty tight. Once yeah. we're kind of like, oh, they did it good. Let's yeah. That's exactly a good one. because it, they so rarely do well. So yeah. let's cherish the ones we have and maybe like shelf this kind of subgenre for a little bit until we can get a good handle on it. So I'm going to say no. Sean, what do you think? Um, uh, Roger Ebert gave this movie three out of four stars. Wanna, that wanna, man's insane. I just want to put that out there. So film criticism is, you know, uh, is what it is. Um, but like we all said tonight, yeah, um, I'm sorry all our listeners and everything. Like, have you guys watched this recently? Like, eh. um, but yeah, I, I don't know what it was. Um, I mean, no, we know exactly what it was. We said it all here tonight. Like, uh, we know exactly why we didn't like this movie. I, I don't like this movie. I was, I brought it tonight because, you know, uh, like I said, uh, Scream Factory just released it. I heard a lot of good, like we heard in the mailbag tonight. I heard a lot of, oh, I remember this being fun. This was a good movie. When I, I'm just like, okay, I kind of, I think I remember liking it back when I first saw it when it first came out. Wanted to revisit here tonight because, like, maybe we're missing something and I need to revisit this. Hmm, we don't. Um, I'd skip Eight-Legged Freaks. It's just not... It's... it's oh, Like everything we said, it's boring. It's it just sucks. not. It's just not. It's just not. It's just not. It's just not. Yeah. I don't, are they trying? I don't know. Uh, it's just not. I, no, it's bad. Yeah. I can't accurately express how much I dislike. See? Now you understand my review. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> I, it's simple. Once you get to a certain point, you're just like, yeah, it sucks. Let's move on. Yep. There it is. All right. Don't watch this movie. All right. Well, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry for everybody. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. What are we watching next week? We're going a little more recent. Uh-oh. We're going to change things up from this week a lot. <laughs> we're going to watch Guns Akimbo. Ah. The Daniel Radcliffe movie. Yep. Okay. I've not seen it. Yep. All right. I haven't seen it either, so it'll be new for oh, some of us. Most of us? All of us. Have you seen it? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Guns of Kimbo. Uncharted territory. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>